All right, guys, Leviticus 5. Leviticus 5. And if a soul sin and he hear the voice of swearing and is a witness, whether he had seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast or a carcass of unclean cattle or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Or if he touch the uncleanliness of man, whatsoever the uncleanliness it be that a man shall be defiled withal and it be hid from him when he knoweth of it then he shall be guilty or if a soul swear pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do good whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath and it be hid from him when he knoweth of it then he shall be guilty in one of these and it shall be when he, he shall be guilty in one of these things that he shall confess that he hath sinned in that thing and he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord for his sin which he hath sinned a female from the flock a lamb or a kid of the goats for a sin offering and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin and if he be not able to bring a lamb then he shall bring for his trespass which he hath committed two turtle doves or two young pigeons unto the lord one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering he shall bring them unto the priest who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first and wring off his head from his neck but shall not divide it asunder he shall sprinkle the blood of the sin offering upon the side of the altar and the rest of the blood shall be wrung out at the bottom of the altar it is a sin offering he shall offer the second for a burnt offering according to the manner and the priest shall make an atonement for him for his sin which he had sinned and it shall be forgiven him but if he be not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons then he then he had and he that had sinned shall bring for his offering the tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a sin offering he shall put no oil upon it neither shall he put any frankincense thereon for it is a sin offering then shall he bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it, even a memorial thereof, and burn it on the altar according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord. It's like, oh, if you don't have no protein, you can just bring some uh, oatmeal. It is a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for him as touching his sin, that he had sinned in one of these, and it shall be forgiven him, and the remnant shall be the priest's as a meat offering. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, If a soul commit a trespass and sin through ignorance in the, in the holy things of the Lord, then he shall bring for his trespass unto the Lord a ram without blemish out of the flocks with thy estimation by shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary for a trespass offering he shall make amends for the harm that he hath done in the holy thing and shall add the fifth part thereto and give it unto the priest and the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering and it shall be forgiven him and if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, though he wist it not, yes, he is guilty, or yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity, he shall bring a ram without blemish out of the flock with thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest, and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his ignorance, wherein he erred and wist it not, and it shall be forgiven him. It is a trespass offering. He hath certainly trespassed against the Lord. Anyway, that's Leviticus 5. So right here you can just picture the people... I'm, I'm I'm just picturing the people. They're obviously not on the move. There's no war going on. There's no king coming out of nowhere. There's no nobody trying to like establishing any civilization in a sense, any settlements. So I just pictured the Israelites waiting for commands. They're just pretty much in the land right now. They're kind of settled already, and they're coming up with counsel. They're coming up with guidance. They're coming up with policies and rules and setting the government. You know, obviously, this is like the very beginning when, you know, church is the head of the state, you know. So this is right here. This is this is the church is the head of the state here. That's exactly what this is right here. I'm locking my door because I'm fucking scared. Fucking some Pope's going to come. But this is the head of the state right here. That's what it is. The head of the state is the church right here. It's establishing it. When you sin, but, and then I feel like, because I'm reading, also reading Martin Luther's the thesis is at this time they were taking actual money for the indulgences it's called indulgences the papacy the pope's indulgences it's pretty much like oh pay pay for your atonement you know pay for your, your contrition you know pay for your 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 your, your repentive heart you know pay me some money i'll give you a receipt to show how really re repentive you are so that went from like killing animals to all the way like you know, when you sin you'll pay for you know many years later like thousand not thousand like maybe like a thousand years maybe later I don't know maybe like 500 years later no it was thousands of years because this is like in 1500s when Martin Luther King wrote this so and you can imagine this was before Christ 
from the days of Moses, so it's almost like 2,000 years before. They're like, dude, we're killing too many. People sin so much, like how we can't keep sacrificing bullocks and rams and sheeps and goats. and We'll be there all day, just have them pay for their sins. It's kind of how the world works, you know? It's kind of how America is right now. Anyway, peace.